Well, it was scary for sure, you know. I remember my parents crying and being like, well, we can't tell you not to, but you know, you're 14 years old. It's like, what are you doing on the street? But then everybody else was 14 years old, old as well, you wow. know. I mean, people went on the street and it was the collectiveness that made the difference. That's interesting. It was like the youth really that got it and really saw mm -hmm. it. They had to do something about their, their yeah. society. Yeah, exactly. Because my parents had already given up at that point, you know. Wow. They had lived behind the Iron Curtain for 35 and 40 years. And they were just like, this is our lifestyle. This is what we have to do. But it was the kids, you know, who when I was 12 asking my political science teacher, oh, why is it facing inwards? This makes no sense. You know, being like, well, why can't I go to Paris and have breakfast? You know, simple stuff that people in the world were taking for granted. That, you know, when kids, when that generation came about, you know, 15 to 25, really, you know, made a difference. But also some of the, of course, elder people, you know, a lot of the, church leaders and a lot of the pastors put away religion and said, look, our church is going to be a safe haven for you guys' meetings. It's not about Christianity or religion, but I want you guys, as you have a safe center that oh, wow. you can express safe from the outside, safe from you know the Stasi or from different uh, spying mechanisms that were in, in East Germany. So youth groups started f meeting, infiltrating, doing flyers, doing posters, and then, you know, every Tuesday, in Dresden and Leipzig, we would just go on the street. And the first demonstration was like a thousand people. You know, for those thousand people, it was like, that's some balls to go on the street in front of machine guns and be like the first ones to raise your hand, basically giving up your life saying, I'll lose my job, I'll lose my family, I might get thrown in jail, but I'm sick and tired of the system, I'm gonna go into the street. Wow. So a thousand people on the first Tuesday turned into, you know, 3,000 on the next Tuesday. And so then within a week, you know, it just escalates to where when I started going there, it was like 60,000, 70,000 people. And that's when the military came in and it came to this point where 100,000 people, are we going to shoot them? And it was the guy in charge who happened to be just a replacement for the old president who was an alcoholic. And he was just too scared to call the shots and being like, hey, let's shoot these demonstrators down. He was just too scared. And it was also the point where as a demonstrator, you're looking at the military and there's your son, you know, there is your friend in a uniform. There is a person that you know and you relate to in your private life that is supposed to shoot you at this game. So people say, well, when is the revolution going to happen here in the US? I always say, well, as long as you got Walmart and TV dinners, it will never happen. Yeah. Because they're giving us just enough to feel comfortable. Exactly. See, in Germany, East Germany, the revolution happened because people started revolting against, hey, we're in a ghetto. We're being kept away from freedom in the world. We can't do anything. Everybody's spying on everybody. Then the food shortages, you know, standing in line for simple basic foods, you know, like potatoes or, you know, cherries or apples, you know, constantly waiting in line where there's really shortages of food. You're realizing your relatives, your family members are getting arrested, thrown in jail. Like it trickles down to where how much can people really take before at the end they go, you know, screw this all, I'm going on the street right now. I'm not going to wait for another day. I'm going to go onto the street. And then as soon as they walk out of their house, they realize, every neighbor, every person down the street is going onto the street. And for that to happen here, I think it, it will never happen. Because there's just too much of a comfort zone still exists. Mm -hmm. That you can still go home and be like, you know what, I'll just play Nintendo or I'll get a TV dinner. You know, there's still enough for you to just block it out, you know. Just looking at these faces of these revolutionaries, you know, yeah. looking at an honest face, looking at, here's my government, here's what I'm supposed to believe in, they're fat, lazy, gray-haired, with evil in their eyes. They're guilty, you know, just by the pure look of them. To these revolutionaries, like you're describing Havel, Gorbachev, even some East German revolutionaries, to where they have the common good in mind, and they're maybe not afraid to risk their lives, you know, for the people to live in a better society. Yeah. And even just the whole personal feeling, or you know, the gut feeling about them, or their personal faces definitely gives you hope, you know, that there's people out there. And it takes a collective of that for more people to do revolt, go onto the street, spread that news, talk about their names, being like, you know, Perestroika, here's the Russian leader saying, hey, we need changes. Hey, we need more freedom, we need honesty, you know, we need class loss, we need things to happen here. And so you don't feel so alone, you know.